guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, if you're a normal viewer here, you've noticed I haven't put up any videos in about the last week. I don't know what the hell to talk about anymore. <laughs> you know, for so long, I've done silly pieces on dating and women behaving badly and, and sometimes movies, sometimes Disney screwing up, sometimes stock uh, prices like on Disney and other things and media companies folding when they go woke. And to be honest, uh, uh, everything now, and I've talked about this before and a lot of stuff, everything seems to be touching on, on the third rail, which is politics. And about 60% of my viewers are here in the United States. And then there's like 5% in Canada, uh, Europe, um, like England, uh, Germany, 3% in Poland, 5% in Australia. And when you add all those up, that comes to like 85, 87% of viewers. So most people in the Western world watch my channel, but there's 13% of you that don't, that you're in other countries that could probably give two shits about the United States and everything else. You want to you wanna hear about dating and relationship stuff and marriages and statistics. The problem is that feminism, once it got its fingers into relationships and into men's issues and into calling men bad and patriarchy and all the rest and the, the also me movement and the rest of it, it kept growing like a tumor. And, and it's put now it's got its fingers in, in video games and it's got it in, in social media and censorship and schools and medicine, politics. It's in everything. It's, it's taken over everything. And that to me is a bigger concern than Disney went woke. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to do this video uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up, I have a secondary channel I haven't touched in a couple, probably a couple of years now, and it's called Better Bachelor B-Sides, but I'm going to rename that because uh, I once renamed it and then I renamed it again. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I'm going to rename that to Odd Man Out, which was my news channel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing some news, um, world news. Now, of course, a lot more of it's going to be focused on you know, the Western world, but I'm going to do world news over there. It's not going to be necessarily hardcore, serious news all the time. I'm going to, that's where I'm going to put some of the issues that I talk about here currently, and probably some of the stuff from this video. I'm going to put that over there. Um, and then over on this side, I'm still going to talk about video games going woke and movies going woke and, and, uh, you know, companies failing because the, and I'm going to focus more on the like the, I don't know, the interesting, fun kind of silly topics um, so we can have a laugh at it. Because I don't want everything to be serious all the time. And, and you know, if you want to get away from some of the politics, I want you to be able to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to watch a, a Better Bachelor video and, and maybe just kind of laugh at the world. And then if you're in the mood to say, hey, you know what, I haven't been able to touch the news in a little bit. I uh, wonder what some of the weird, crazy stories are going on. Then you can jump over to my Odd Man Out channel, so uh, which is my Better Bachelor B side. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna set that up this afternoon. I, that's the only way I can see of of continuing doing news that that you, that you guys might want to hear or content that you guys want to hear. Without I don't want to just stuff politics into everything, but politics is in everything, and it's very very frustrating. So that that's where where I am, and I didn't I don't I didn't know what to do. So for a week I've just been kind of sitting here. Uh, wondering like what, what am I, how am I going to proceed with this stuff because this next year with an election here in the United States it's going to be crazy we got you know the the Israel Gaza thing kicking off we still got Ukraine Russia going we got Chinese sniffing down down the necks of Taiwan there's just and I think those are important and I do want to talk about them but I don't want to have that take over the channel that you guys have come to to love and enjoy for the silliness so I'm going to be breaking that up. Uh, after this video, I'll, I'll, I'll log in and, and get the other channel started and probably upload this video over there as well. Uh, so we're going to start off, you know, the evil monkeys to have taken over the circus. The, 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 intersectional, the intersectional feminism and feminism started by wanting to destroy men. They, they, it's not about being equal because the laws are equal. In many cases, women get preferential treatment when it comes to court, when it comes to divorce, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to child custody, when it comes to even now getting paid. In, uh, I did a video on this a while back. Out of 150 of the most 
uh, highly populated uh, cities in the United States, 148 of them pay women more than men. Now, if it were the other way around, the feminists would be screaming, but now they're surprisingly silent now that they have the lead in that. Uh, they had all these college programs and they, they wanted to do scholarships, you know, things like that. And they did. And now women are participating at college at a 60% versus men's 40. Have they come back around and said, okay, now we need to help the guys out because they're falling behind? No, they haven't. So women, women complain until they get, they want equality until they get the lead and then they get a commanding lead. And then when it's like, okay, now we need to, Hey, we need to come back and visit the guys again to, to, you know, even things out. It's um, a patriarchy. No. And so women are not going to be happy until they've taken control of everything. And we already see what's happening to the world right now with them taking over everything. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about this because this is what I really feel is going to be the downfall of the world, I guess, at this point. Um, I'm going to start off with New York Post. So as you know, right now, if, if you look at which side of the con – and I'm not going to get too deep into the, into the conflict between Gaza and Israel – uh, I am not all in for the, wor the United States being the world police and our values being superimposed on everybody else because that's what's getting us in a lot of crap right now. If you look at schools and the LDHD TV and the change in the young boys into girls and girls into boys, that all started here in the United States from awful women. And when I say awful, that means affluent, white, uh, um, that's the AWF uh, uh, feminist, um, urban, and liberal women, lefty women, right? That's the awful acronym. That started from women here that are, they have nothing better to do except stick their noses in everything. And then that bled over overseas. Same thing with a Bravo Lima mic, you know, the BLM. That went overseas, even though there's a lot of countries like the UK, in the UK and Australia where, I, where the police don't always carry weapons. But it's, ah, hands up, don't shoot, and the rest of that all went around the world because it's activism. It's Marxist activism that is coming in to destroy the family unit, to destroy women, to destroy men, to break everything down, and then big daddy government will take over. And the women, man, they, the, they, bit, the, they bit the worm, they got the hook in, and they're being, being reeled off. And, and where I see it happening is in multiple places, but one of them that I came across today was this article. Uh, this is actually from a couple days ago. 28 employees of Google go into their boss's office to protest over Google having a contract with Israel, and they got fired and they got arrested. Now, at Google, I think the median income is something like $120,000. It was more important for these employees to get arrested, get fired, and lose their income just to make a statement. Conservatives don't do that because a lot of times they have families. You know, their, their families, their future, their investment, their retirement, their, their whatever means more. But not to these, not to these women. And, and let's be honest, it is the women, and then you've got weak men that go along with it because they, they think that's going to get them in good with these weak women. These are the feminist supporters, and these men are worse than the women because at least the women are standing up for their own cause. And these men just jump on because, well, I want attention from women, and, and women seem to like this stuff, so I'm going to jump on, and maybe, I'll, maybe she'll let me sniff her panties if I'm good. So Google and fires 20 employees involved in a sit-in protest. Uh, it was a 10-hour sit-in at the search giant's offices in New York and Sunnyvale, California. So New York and California, both very lefty places, to protest the company's business ties with the uh, Israel government. The pro-Palestine staffers who wore traditional Arab headscarves as they stormed and occupied the office of a top executive in California on Tuesday were terminated late Wednesday after an internal vet investigation. Google Vice President of Global Security Chris Rakow said in a company-wide memo, they took, off, they took over office spaces, defaced our property, and physically impeded the work of Googlers. Uh, Rakow wrote in the memo obtained by the Post, their behavior was unacceptable, extremely disruptive, and made coworkers feel threatened. 
The New York pro protesters had occupied the 10th floor of Google offices and the Chelsea section of Manhattan as part of protests that also extended the company's offices in Seattle. Behavior like this has no place in our workplaces or uh, no place in our workplaces, blah, blah, blah. But, here, but here, this is how you know it's infiltrated, how the, the monkeys have taken over the, surf, uh, the circus. Google, Google could fire these people. They could get rid of all of the leftism. They could get rid of all the activism. They could get rid of all the woke, but they don't. They'll get rid of these 28. But what about the thousands of other employees they have that are basically activists? They can't because now they're, they're in the main offices. They're in the CEO. They're in the DEI headquarters of Google. It's been take, the circus has been taken over by the monkeys, and now they're trapped. And so, yes, they will get rid of these employees, but th they, this is not the first time they've had this uprising. And they keep hiring the same woke people over and over again because the people that are in the positions of hiring – and probably some of the, the ones on the board of directors, it's all woke and they can't help it. And, and then what happens is, and this is how it ties into the politics of things, right? What happens is the president of our United States right now, probably the mayor of New York, probably the mayor of, of, uh, of New York City, probably the mayor of Los Angeles, what happens is they, they see this and they say, wow, people are really fired up over this. And the president sees that, the president of the United States sees that, and then he becomes mushy mouth. He becomes middle of the road. And you guys know what happens to middle of the road people. They get run over. And, and so he starts, well, we're going to support this side, and then we're going to support this side, and we're going to support this side, and we're going to support this side. And everybody's unhappy. But all the other countries around say, that, well, America's weak. This president's weak. They don't know what's going on. We're going to take advantage. Boom, escalation of everything. Here's the sit-in. He's, uh, he's got a lot to say about this. Google, you can't hide. Google, Google, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. We charge you with genocide. They literally have T-shirts that they have printed that says Googler against genocide. They went out and spent good money on T-shirts, guys. These are and weak dude, weird woman, 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 who knows, probably woman, and a couple of dudes. These guys, they're, they're weak. They're weak. And that weakness is bleeding over into everything. Remember, weak men make bad times. We are definitely, definitely here. Weak people make bad times. These weak, men, these weak men are letting the women and their emotions and their feminism run everything right into the dirt. It's now infecting the church as well. Now, this is not new. This has been going on because this, you can see the headlines from 2021, but it's happening in more and more churches around the country because uh, I saw another one that happened. Newly ordained Lutheran pastor hosts drag Bible study class for children at Woke Chicago Church. This is, uh, this is modern Christianity, letting this stuff into the church. And who's the, new, who's the new Lutheran pastor? A woman, a gay woman. What a shock. So now they've let women start running the church. And what happened? We're getting further away from the church. We're getting further away from the Bible. We're getting further away from God. And this is the new religion. This is the new religion. Leftism, activism. So already we can see it's destroying companies, Disney, Google, um, Netflix, and all the protests up there, all the, media, all the media outlets. Companies are suffering there. It's gotten into churches. It's getting into schools. And, you know, a good example, this is actually really not quite tied into my current thing, but I did want to show this, is that it's gotten into dating, it's gotten into relationships, it's gotten into the, the interactions between men and women. Uh, this woman said chivalry is in fact dead. What happened to the days of men offering women their seats? Now, I'm not sure if this has music, so I'll play it for just a second. Yeah, it has a bunch of noise over it. Uh, but she, she's standing, and then she's pointing to all the men that are sitting. Yeah, they're old, you know, 
older middle aged guys, young guy there. There are people, she's on a train, for those of you just listening, or bus or something, and everybody's sitting there. And she says, well, what happened to the days of men offering women seats? Why would we offer you a seat? We, we used to do it because you, you were sweet and kind and feminine, and we protected you, and we made your life easy. But you didn't want that, ladies. You wanted to be strong. You wanted to be just like men. You wanted all the privileges of men. Well, that also comes with all the challenges and the downsides. So now you sh you'll be going off to war if we go off to conflict, and you can stand on a bus. You know, there's the joke where a woman said, uh, I was pregnant and got on a bus, and uh, I asked this guy why he didn't offer up his seat, and he said, you should have not gotten knocked up by a guy that doesn't own a car or, you know, something similar. You should only get knocked up by a man that can give you uh, a car or buy you a car. See, women want all the good of feminism and, and being equal to men, but they don't want any of the pain in the ass and the challenge. And we're going to give it to them. Trust me, we're going to give it to them. That's why I say now, when a woman says, hey, uh, do you want to go out to a date? Hey, you know what? Uh, say, hey, you know what? You've got a good job. Why don't you treat me? And I expect flowers. And you better drive a nice car. And you be, uh, better be under 125 pounds. And you better... And when the woman goes nuts, you go, well, th well that's, that's what you expect of us. And we're equal now, right? We're the same. You wanted the same. So now you're the same. So now you get treated the same. Welcome. They've taken over, they've taken over social media. They've taken over sanity. This, this dumb dink has a photo of Karl Marx on her wall right here. And... The pronouns she's talking about are seasonal. She wants us to keep up with what, how she feels or how she identifies based on the season. Oh, it's winter, so now I'm a it, and it's, oh, it's fall, so now I'm a she, her. Oh, it's, it's summertime, now I'm a they, them. Oh, it's, you know. Now, uh, Karl Marx would have probably not had it. She would have been one of the ones in the mine digging. That's what makes this so insane is because she also supports this. She supports this protest. She supports, she supports Iran. She supports uh, Iran and, and Palestine against Israel. Do you, do you know where, where gays are openly welcome and they fly pride flags? Israel. I don't know if you knew that or not. Yep, they have uh, pride flags on buildings in Israel. Do you know what they have uh, on buildings in Iran? People like her are getting thrown off the top of them. I didn't know if many of you knew that or not. So she's literally cheering on the people that would end her happily and laugh. Now, again, it doesn't matter what side you are in the conflict, but women— in Iran, just a couple of years ago, were protesting about the hijabs and wearing the clothes and everything else, and some of them were shot by police. Some of them were arrested. Some of them were beaten. Some of them were ended. <laughs> Did you hear these women uh, shouting about that, backing up those women that just wanted to not have to wear a certain garb and to be free? Nope. Now these women are cheering on that country because they've been told to by intersectional feminism and the left. And the weirdos. So they're taking over the families. And uh, this is where, I'm not going to read this whole article. But it's from Insider. Farewell and good riddance to the typical American family. You know, the typical American, the, well, the typical American family is the same as the typical German family and Polish family and Filipino family and Thai family. Mother, father, kids. But they can't have that because then the kids... And the offspring and the mother and father, they have a, a strong family unit. That gives something men to fight for, something for women to fight for, for their kids, for their family. They don't want that. They want you to be alone and sad and lonely and, anger and uh, angry and bitter and giving up on society. And you just say, oh, do, what I, do with it what you will. I don't care anymore. That's what they want you to do. Now, we, of course, care. Now, we're a different sort of, many of us are a different sort of guys to where we say, well, we don't maybe have the kids, we don't have a wife to care about, but I care about myself, I care about my community, 
I care about my fellow man. I think that's actually more important to fight for or just as important to fight for. They want to tear it all down. And the young generation today, when they see the inflation rise and everything going crazy, do they blame Justin Trudeau? Nope. Do they blame Joe Biden? Nope. Who do they blame it on? Capitalism. Capitalism, because that's what they've been told. That's what they've been taught in school. Because our schools have been taken over by the monkeys, the intersectional feminists. They've taken over the school. And, you know, ironically, if the young people keep going at this rate, they're going to get exactly what they want. They will get Marxism. They will get communism. It, of course, I won't be here anymore. I'll probably have been ended by a long-range hole puncher trying to fight for my freedom someday if it gets that bad. But otherwise, these young kids will get what they want. And only then will they realize how stupid they are. But they're going to tear everything down because, well, that's what they've been told. The monkeys are all being telling all the other monkeys that the circus is bad. So they, now we need to take it over and tear it down. They say for most of the 20th century, the word family in America evoked a predictable picture of cookie cutter cleanliness and happily married husband and wife, their two and a half kids and one probably well-behaved golden retriever all under the same roof. But the nuclear family has steadily eroded over the last 50 years. I don't know about you, but that first paragraph pretty much sounds like heaven to me. Just to me personally. The first major uh, blow came with a 73 oil crisis, two-year recession that followed, which single signaled the end of the West's uh, prosperity boom. Since then, the nuclear family has crumbled piece by piece. In 1970, more than two-thirds of American adults between 25 and 49 lived with a spouse and at least one kid. By 2021, only 37% of adults fit the bill. And yet, why? Because the government started giving away all the things. The government started taking, giving away all the things, and which led to the collapse of the black and Latinos and many of the poor communities because the, the men weren't expected to stick around and the women said, we don't need you. We just need the government. And so they say good riddance to families, good riddance to nuclear families, good riddance to the men being in charge of a strong, happy household and the mother giving birth and everything else. And what's becoming of that? Uh, I want to I want to save this. I'm going to slide that towards the end there. I, I, I don't want to forget about this one. And what's because coming of it? Sorry, ladies, the number of young men who want kids is on the decline. A bit, now, this is from 2022, again, a couple years old. But men are seeing the, the poisonous, awful things that women have become. And men are also, young, young men are also being told capitalism bad, you know, being masculine bad, being in touch with your feelings good, protesting, screaming, crying, shouting, being like a woman good being strong man, bad. And so the young, the young generation's listening to that. Not all of them, thank God. They say, uh, um, uh, new, new, according to new research published in the Journal of Marriage and Family, the number of young men that want families is on the decline. The study's author, Robert Bozick, collected data from three different sources, the National Survey for Family Growth, the panel study, of income dynamics and a study called Monitoring the Future, looking at more than 40,000 young American men over two decades. According to one of the data sets, the number of male high school seniors who said they never want kids has more than tripled in the last 20 years. And more broadly, men's desire to have kids has significantly declined. Between 2012 and 2018, the percentage of childless men ages 15 to 49 responded they didn't want children doubled from 10 to 20 percent. And why? because of the courts, because of women initiating divorce and getting kids all the time. I mean, at, at a huge rate, because women not wanting to stay home and take care of a child and sending, sending them off to daycare where gosh knows what can happen to them. And, and they cheer about this. The monkeys are cheering the circus is burning down, not realizing that once the circus burns down, they're going to be a homeless, hungry monkey. They're not going to have any place to go. And they cheer it on. They don't care. They'd rather be activists losing their 106-figure job at Google. They'd rather be an activist instead. It's more important. Even though the economies are horrible, both for Canada, I think Europe has its own stresses, here in the United States, 60% of women 
that were interviewed in larger cities, six, over 60% of women said they're still going to vote for the left, even though everything's horrible. And why? Because they find a way to blame it on the right, even though the right's not in control of anything really here in the United States, at least. They find a way to blame. blame. So same thing. It's like a chicken cheering on KFC for taking over the world. From News Colony, terrifying threat of underpopulation is laid bare as it's revealed how 75% of nations are facing, facing baby busts by 2050, and the West will be left reliant on migrants, triggering staggering social change. Now, here they talk about the U.S. and the U.K., but they say these four countries, and they, they, they have here in the graphic U.S. and the U.K. Where else? Australia, um, Germany, Sweden. All, the, all these countries are having problems. Uh, South Korea, Japan, feminism, women were entering the workforce, women wanting to be the smart ones. Women know everything. Women are just going to be strong and independent. Okay, well, there's no more babies then. Now, do I care, do I personally care that in 100 years, we might be, the United States might be completely Muslim and Muslims take over the, the world? But I don't care. I'll be dead. I care what happens while I'm here. I like the United States and its freedoms. But ironically, if, if either the, the Chinese, if, if the Middle East, if, uh, if they happen to take over the world, guess what? The women will be worse off. The men will be fine, really, if you think about it. I mean, <laughs> if the, the Muslims country, Muslim countries don't put up with any of this crap from their women. So uh, it's a self-correcting problem, even if Christianity is stamped out or the West is stamped out. I, I won't be here anymore. So what's the point? Why should I care? Because women are going to vote themselves right out of their own happiness. That's what, but that's what they always do because they're stupid about this stuff. Um, I was going to do a, a whole segment on this, but I'm, I'm not going to. But if you watched uh, my last video or the video before that, I talked about NPR, right? Um, which is our, our public news, right? Our, na our, our national broadcasting uh, that, that shares news on the radio here in the United States. NPR, they had a guy come out who'd worked there for 25 years and he was a little bit of a whistleblower, but it's not like a whistleblower. He was more like, hey, I'm going to write an op-ed and I'm just going to tell you, look, I've been an editor for, for NPR there's no Republicans. There's no conservatives. It's all left-leaning. They're all activists. They're all woke. And he came out, and, and I talked about it, how women have taken over media. Women have taken over the news. Women have taken over everything. The, and, and when I say women, what I mean is women and their, the intersectional feminism infected the minds of both young men and young women. And they came in and they are the ones that are making all the noise and the companies say, we don't need this headache, just we'll try to do the right thing because the young people are going in this new direction. And of course, it all gets torn down. Well, after he wrote that article, he got suspended. He got suspended for telling everybody what's going on at NPR. And then he resigned just after a week or 10 days after writing that article about how the NPR is, is swung, if they're far left, there's no conservatives, there's no balanced reporting, they're actively working against, you know, Trump and conservatives and things like that. He gets suspended and then has to, to step down. They literally just prove their point. And now they have a new NPR CEO, Catherine Maher, and uh, she's explaining that the truth is an outdated concept that everybody can have their own truth. Now, this is a, uh, how, how long? This is a two minute long video. I won't subject you to all of it. But she says, well, there's the truth and then there's your vision of the truth and how you see the truth. And when you combine them, everybody has their own truths. I just realized, looking in the, I just realized my t-shirt is very wrinkly. <laughs> That's what I get for living out of a bag in a barn in the middle of the woods. So apologize for looking like a slob today. Um, she says, well, you know, you mix that and everybody can have their own truth. That's not how any of this works. But it is when you're an activist. It is when you want to, you want to rule the world the way you want. 
and this will continue. I mean, it's again, it's in our military. Now there's there guys, I have seen photos of military members in, in the, the, the furry masks, you know, wearing the, there's yeah. On social media, furry masks and men are that are women, women are men. They're all up in our military. Now there are generals, you know, the health secretary. It's, it's, I don't, I don't know if this, this tumor, I don't know if this cancer is terminal yet, but it's in every system of the body and it's destroying everything. And, the, and so when the, when the, when the monkeys take over the circus, they don't care if the circus makes money. They don't care if people want to come to the circus anymore. They don't, they don't care about any of that stuff. They just want to th throw crap and, and burn things down. And that's, that's where we are in this stage of things. Uh, she, again, the same woman, Catherine Marr, says uh, th she took a very active approach to disinformation, coordinating censorship through conversation with government and suppressed content related to the pandemic, to the bug and to the 2020 election. She's admitting, I don't like what some of the people were saying about stuff, so I am going to censor them. And she did this while she was uh, as CEO of Wikipedia. So CEO of Wikipedia that basically destroyed Wikipedia and made it unusable and unreliable and a bastion of left lies. Because if you write anything they disagree with, they just re-edit it and someone locks the page. So the bastion of, of ruining that is now promoted to NPR. And now she's going to just continue going off to the left on that. So there goes NPR as a news source. Berliner wrote in the free press, quote, it is true NPR is... Let me, let me start this over again, because this explains the Yuri uh, Berliner resignation from NPR after exposing their, their bias. Now, this is Fox News. I, I don't think Fox News is any better than CNN or MSNBC. They're just as crap. But what they are saying is accurate. So I'll at least play that. We have breaking news now. The NPR senior editor who revealed to the world the invasive liberal bias at NPR has just resigned. Now, remember, we first reported to you Uri Berliner was suspended for five days without pay this week. And that happened after he wrote the article that you see there, the headline of In the Free Press last week. Chief Washington correspondent Mike Emanuel. Mike, this was quick. No doubt about it, Harris. Uh, after those public comments about pervasive left-wing bias at NPR, now the senior editor, Uri, Uri Berliner, writing on X, quote, I'm resigning from NPR, a great American institution where I have worked for 25 years. I don't support calls to defund NPR. I respect the integrity of my colleagues and wish for NPR to thrive and do important journalism. But I cannot work in a newsroom where I am disparaged by a new CEO whose divisive views confirm the very problems at NPR I cite in my free press essay. In the fallout of his scathing public commentary about NPR, Berliner wrote in the free press, quote, it is true NPR has always had a liberal bent, but during most of my tenure here, an open-minded, curious culture prevailed. We were nerdy, but not knee-jerk activist or scolding. In recent years, however, that has changed. In response, Editor-in-Chief Edith Chapman said she strongly disagreed in a memo to staff obtained by Fox, quote, we're proud to stand behind the exceptional work that our desks and shows do to cover a wide range of challenging stories. We believe that inclusion among our staff, with our sourcing, and in our overall coverage is critical to telling the nuanced stories of this country. Nuanced stories, the inclusion, got yeah, all the DEI buzzwords, right? So the guy that's been there for forever, white man, of course, he's out. What do you do? And, and this is a genuine question for you guys. This is a genuine question for you guys. What do you do when this pervasive craziness has taken over everything. Businesses, it takes over the news, it takes over the media, it takes over schools and hospitals and medicine and foreign policy and the government and judges and eh, blah, 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 blah. what do you do? How do you make it? 
I have a feeling so many people don't know that this is happening. And then by the time they realize it'll be too late. You know, it's, it's kind of like if you get, if you get a pretty, you know, pretty good cut on your hand, right? You get a good nick or cut on your hand. It's a little deep and, but you don't wash it. If you wash it right away, if you wash it, soap and water, maybe put a, a, a butterfly or a bandaid on it, you know, get it good and clean. You're done. Heals up in a couple of days, maybe a few days more than that, and you're done. You're good to go. But let's say you don't even bother to wash it, and you wait 24 or 48 hours. Well, now you've got now you got a little bit of infection. But you know, then you wash it, you bandage it, you go get a little medicine from the doctor. It goes away. Well, you got that same cut. Now it's been a, it's been a week, and instead of instead of just being a cut. Instead of just having a little infection, you, you look at your, you know, you look at, at your veins and you got purple poison lines coming up. Now you got the infection up to your elbow. Now it's like staph infection. Now it's a hospital stay for seven days while they pump you full of biotics and they, they clean up the hand. Maybe, maybe remove some uh, necrotic tissue around there and they sew it up. And, and you're lucky. You're lucky that you made it. What happens if you get that cut and you just don't do anything about it? And then you get infected, and then it gets into your blood, blood staph infection. That's it. You're, you're done. They're putting you in a grave. They're putting you in a grave. Very early on when you have a problem, if you take care of it, it's done. And the longer you go, the worse it gets. This was just, in, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, this was only in colleges. People were warning, hey, these people are going to come out of these weirdo colleges into the real world. And everybody said, oh, they'll find out what the real world's like, lol, and there won't be a problem. But then they took over universities and then they took over medicine and they went out into the work world and they took over the media accounts and they took over advertising and they started to protest. And then they took over writing articles, you know, getting hired for 50 bucks a, a pop to write articles for BuzzFeed, Newsfeed, and then, and then, and then, and then. The, the monkeys repopulated and started infecting the circus. And that's where we are. And now a man who said, hey, I, I like NPR. I just want to let you guys know, we got a problem here. We should probably look at, into it. A man that was an executive editor or high-end editor for 25 years, gets suspended without pay until he decides to leave because the new CEO targets him. Where's the finish line for all this? Where's the, where do we go? So if you go to California, California, and I, and I just have these two last things and then I'll, I'll wrap it up. Where does this go when it gets into the government? It directly harms people, families. Now, for those of you on YouTube, um, I'm going to cut it here because there's a lot of words that I can't say. And I want to talk about this. I want to talk about a, <laughs> I want to talk about a, a woman that's getting set free for ending her kids. And I want to talk about a woman that goes absolutely batshit crazy in an airport, strips down to her nothingness, gets undressed. And starts flashing herself. And this isn't like some weirdo, nuts, you know, overweight 50-year-old. This is a very young college-age girl, not the type you would expect to do this stuff. So if you're over on, on YouTube, jump over to Rumble, jump over to Locals if you want to see the rest of this, because that's where I'm going to talk about the adult portion of this conversation. Mm -hmm.